Hello everyone, it's Marnie. So today I'll be doing the scavenger book hunt, which I was tagged in by literary, literary labors. Sorry. Um, it consists of five questions that I have to find a book for. I'll also be reading all of these books this month. So the first one is a book that reminds you of childhood reading. So I was at first thinking something like Goosebumps or um, the Saddle Club or something along those lines because they were all books I read when I was little, even Harry Potter. But I decided that I would go with Skyduggery Pleasant instead by Derek Lanley. So I read this, when did I first read it? Pretty sure I read it the year it came out, which wasn't that long ago. It was long ago, but not. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, where are we? Do, 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 do. Yep, 2007. No, that's when that's a copyright. This was first published in 2006. So yep, I was 16 when I first read this book. So it's been a long time, over 10 years since I've read this book. This is a copy I got for my daughter because I I loved it when I was a teenager. So I got it for her to be able to read. Um, so the synopsis is, with his sunglasses gone, there was no denying the fact that he had no face. All he had was a skull for a head. Meet Skull Duggery Pleasant, wise cracking detective, powerful magician, sworn enemy of evil. Oh yes, and dead. So this is going to be a re -re -re reread for me. It's going to be fun because like I said, it was over 10 years ago. So the next one is read a book from an author you've never heard before. For this one, I chose a book that a friend of mine gave me to read. And that's The Sinner by Tess Gerritsen. So my friend gave it to me to read because she thinks I'll enjoy it a lot and I'm hoping I will. I haven't heard about the author before. I'm actually going to try and do some research because I've learnt to research authors and all that. Um, this is a third book, but as I'm told, they don't have to be read in order, which is going to be good because this is, like, obviously I haven't heard the author before, so this is the first time of knowing of the book too. So the synopsis is, within the walls of the cloistered convent, a scene of unspeakable carnage is discovered. On the snow lie two nuns, one dead, one critically injured, victims of seemingly motive, motiveless, brutally savage attack. Has medical examiner Maura Isles' autopsy of the murder victim yields a shocking surprise, the case takes a sudden and disturbing twist. The body of another woman has been found, and someone has gone to a lot of trouble to remove her face, hands and feet. Has long... As long buried secrets are revealed, so Dr. Isles and homicide detective Jane Rizzoli find themselves part of an investigation that leads to an awful, dawning realisation of the killer's identity. So it sounds really interesting. It sounds like it's got a lot of twists and all that in the book, and it would be really good to read it and actually get around to reading it because, yeah, it's my friend's book. So the next one is a book... In Need of Love. So for this, it's I chose a book that I'm currently borrowing off of another friend who's actually my librarian too. This book she bought from one of the library book sales that they do every school holidays. So that's why I put it in Need of Love because it got sold from the library to her and then she's lending it to me to be able to read and all that. So that's Northern Light by Philip Pullman. I actually had this series... I, I put it on hold at the library and have been waiting and waiting. It's been a year and about three months that I've been waiting to try and get this book in. And then my friend decided she'd just lend it to me. So it's good. I'll get around to reading it. So this is the first book in His Dark Materials trilogy. So the synopsis says, When Lyra's friend Roger disappears, she and her demon Pantalimon determined to find him. The ensuing quest leads them to the bleak splendour of the north, where armoured bears rule the ice and witch queens fly through the frozen skies, and where a team of scientists is conducting experiments too horrible to be spoken about. Lyra overcomes these strange terrors only to find something yet more perilous waiting for her, 
something with consequences which may even reach beyond the Northern Lights. So, like I said, I wanted to read this series. I actually, I actually found the series on old booktube videos because I like to go through and look at people's top tens and I would write lists tonight. So, this one, well, like the series intrigued me to be able to read. Alright, so the next one is read a book written before you were born. I found this originally really hard to find. I was going to go with Postmortem, which was actually by um, Patricia Cornwell, which was actually published the year I was born. But I was going to research and see if it was published a month or two before I was born. But it was published the year I was born. And then I went looking through my bookshelf in my bedroom, because I have bookshelves in my kitchen, my lounge room, and my bedroom. And I found The White Fox. I first received this book when I was about 14, 15. My parents had got it in an auction in a box of mixed stuff. Um, to this date, I have not read this book. I was always meaning to read it because I like foxes and generally books about animals and stuff like that intrigue me. But I have never actually gotten around to this. I think when I, was, when I first grabbed this book, my favourite book at that point in time was called Fox Spell, which is a really, really good book for kids to read. It has a lot of magic and mystery and all in it, and it's, it's got a lot of issues in it too, so it wouldn't be so much for kids, but more for teenagers. But this book is what I chose for Before I Was Born because it was published in July 1986, was the first printing, and the second printing was August 1986. So this was four years before I was born. And I'll finally get around to reading it after having it for so long. As you can see, it's like really old and people put holes in it and everything. But I'll get around to reading it finally. So the synopsis says, Challon the dog fox is on the prowl in a dangerous world where survival is everything. A catastrophe has scorched the earth and few living things are left. And those who remain are forced to become hunters or be hunted. It is a cold and bitter time and Challon is close to starvation when he picks up the trail of something that holds the promise of food. Pangs of hunger shake him violently as he tenses ready for the kill. Then he sees his prey, a vision of light, a delic delicately beautiful white fox. Thus begins the dramatic story of love and survival that celebrates the affinity between wildlife and humanity and, other future, and our future together. So... I'm going to be very careful with reading this book because it's in not that good of a condition. It's already got a lot of tape put on it, holding it together. And yeah, it's lasted with my care for a while now. I've had it for over 10 years. And the last one is read something containing your first initials, first initial in the title. So at first I took this question has that the title had to start with my first initial and I went searching all of my shelves, all the books I've borrowed from the library, the works, and realise that I don't actually have any that start with M. I have ones that go the, and then the word starts with M, like the mermaid, but I don't have anything that actually starts with M. And then I reread the question and realised that it just has to have M somewhere within the title. So I've already started this one because I tried recording this book tag like more than once. I've gone through 30 batteries, all of them only letting me record a partial amount and then it cut out and I bought new batteries today and thankfully my camera is lasting now so I've already started the book and the book I'm reading is Gemini which is the second book in the Illuminae files this one is like, I loved the Illuminae files and the way it was set up like it did like the first book did annoy me a little bit because I couldn't quite grasp the story, like not with all the stuff they had, but then I think about 20% into the book, it started actually producing more of a story for me, not just snip bits of this and that. So I actually really, really, really got into the Illuminate Files, and I had to move on to the next one. So this one's synopsis is moving to a space station at the edge of the galaxy was always going to be the death of Hannah's social life. Nobody said it might actually get her killed. 
The saga that began the saga that began with the breakout bestseller Illuminate continues on board the space station Hemdel. Hannah is the station captain's pampered daughter, Nick the reluctant member of a notorious crime family. Little do they know that Han Caddy Grant and the Hypothea are headed to Hemdel, carrying news of Krenz's invasion. When an elite biotech team invades the station, Hannah and Nick are thrown together to defend their home. Soon Hannah and Nick aren't just fighting for their own social survival, the fate of everyone on the Hypothea and possibly in the known universe is in their hands. So that's going to be really interesting to finish reading and getting through so I can move on to the next one. So that's me doing the scavenger hunt book tag. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, please. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye.